Every year, Erev Rosh Hashanah, Rabbi Stephen Ammon's wife, would go with her father and siblings to the Staten Island Jewish Cemetery to visit her mother's kever. One year, she knew she wasn't going to be able to make it that day. So a couple of weeks before Rosh Hashanah, she was driving with her husband, Rabbi Stephen Ammon, from Deal, New Jersey, where they live, to Brooklyn to visit their grandkids. We were on Route 440. There's an exit four that's Arthur Kill Road. That road leads to the cemetery. So as I saw the exit approaching, I asked my wife, should we just pull off the exit and you can do your thing now? So she said, yeah, maybe it's a good idea. They pulled off the exit, they got to the cemetery. The cemetery was completely empty. They were able to pull up right next to the kever. They get out, they start davening. Mrs. Ammon davened for a while. Rabbi Ammon had finished already. He was waiting for her to finish. And as he was waiting, he looked around and he notices how a hearse and a couple of cars pull into the cemetery and stop a couple of rows behind them. All of a sudden, one of the people called me over. They said, we need a number 10 for our Kaddish. So I told my wife, I'm gonna go and I'll be back shortly. I helped them put the coffin into the grave and they said Kaddish. After that, they started leaving. I said, well, I'm many, you didn't bury them. So they said, don't worry, we got the tractor does that. <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, we don't do that. And they literally left. Well, I remember learning in yeshiva that this scenario was also referred to as meis mitzvah. That meis mitzvah was not just if there was literally nobody to bury, but if you had relatives who walked away, you sort of also had nobody to bury, and this was called the meis mitzvah. So I went to the person sitting the tractor and said, do you mind if you give me a shovel and I'll do it for you? You could go and I'll bury the person. And I says, I don't mind. Rabbi Ammon spent an hour and a half finishing the burial until the entire grave was covered with dirt. He turned to put the marker that the family had left and stick it into the grave, but right before he did that, he took note of the name and wrote it down. The whole way driving to Brooklyn, I was thinking like, why, why, why? I wasn't planning to be here. Strange, a funeral pops up in the middle of nowhere, and I'm number 10, and then I'm the guy who's burying him. <laughs> It seemed weird. Rabbi Amma decided to make some calls, make some inquiries, and find out a little bit more about who this guy was. One of the people Rabbi Amman called was his mentor and Rebbe, the late Rabbi Herman Neuberger, the executive director of Neri Yisrael, the yeshiva that he went to. But when he told him the person's name, Rabbi Neuberger almost dropped the phone. Rabbi Neuberger told him, 40 years ago, when you were growing up in Seattle, Washington, and you enrolled in Neri Yisrael, your father had lost his job. In those days, it was quite different than nowadays. You paid for long distance calls, airfare was expensive. I remember the ticket cost $300 one way. We got the 300, flew to Yeshiva, and of course the next problem is tuition. Rabbi Neuberger decided to try to help out and find a person who can supplement Rabbi Stephen Ammon's tuition. Rabbi Neuberger told Rabbi Ammon on the phone, the person who ended up paying and sponsoring your tuition for all your years in yeshiva was the fellow you had just buried the other day. It went full circle that uh, this person who paid for my education, and while I was in yeshiva, I remember learning this halacha of meis mitzvah. It has been ohel, and the ohel's matamet is chote tushmei atumah, and therefore you'll be so hard. I was able to repay him uh, and give him an appropriate burial. One of the holy Hasidic masters, Rabbi Yisrael from Rizhen, once said, on Rosh Hashanah we describe Hashem as a zoicher kol hanishkaches. Hashem remembers all that's forgotten. So the Rebbe said, when you forget, Hashem remembers. But when you remember, Hashem forgets. When you remember favors and chesed that you do for other people and you expect them to do it in return, you hold them accountable for it, you remind them about it. Hashem says, well, if you remember, I can forget about it. When you forget what you do for others, you help them, and you let them off the hook. You don't expect anything in return. Hashem says, I'm a zoicher, I will remember that. Decades later, when everybody has forgotten, I will make sure that you will be repaid in full.